The trade in ornamental fish is one of the oldest hobbies in the world, dating back to many centuries. The popularity has increased steadily, with just the trade in these fish estimated at 1 billion US dollars. Along with accessories and fish feed, the trade is at 18 to 20 billion dollars globally. But why do people love them so much? It all started around probably 35 to 38 years back when I was in Kerala. And we used to have a stream uh, in our house and along with the neighbors we used to catch a lot of fish. And I think that, that's what kind of triggered that passion for me. So that's carried on throughout my life. Initially I was more into most of the common fishes that you find near stores and all that. But slowly as I started exploring our uh, you know, neighborhood, neighborhood water, water bodies and all that, uh, I started developing an interest for native fishes. Just like the again the coral reef areas again, the rainforest streams in Western Ghats are rich in fish fauna again. Just like the beauty that these rivers are offering us again, just like we are having several beautiful creatures, the fishes in these Western Ghats streams again. More than 320 species are there, which are again, out of which again more than 250 species are endemic or where the rest distribution is restricted to this particular geographic location. The ease of keeping fish as pets, as calming agents, in foot spas, or as showpieces has sparked the growth of associated hobbies such as aquatic plants and fancy housing. Does this trade really affect the fish in the wild? Are there any solutions? Collection of wild fish for the trade is, I would say, rather limited, but uh, it also would have an impact, but not as big or as negative or permanent an impact as anthropogenic activities like sand mining, dams, or uh, even extraction of uh, pebbles and stones in certain areas. Apart from all the known threats, invasive species such as the African catfish, tilapia, and a horde of others that have been introduced more recently into the freshwaters cause irreparable loss to the ecosystem and also to species such as Miss Kerala and all her friends within the freshwater ecosystems. It is realistic uh, to realize that fish, irrespective of the ornamental trade, have a serious pressure. And that pressure only gets added when we are dependent only on wild caught species. Uh, the future of everything is sustainability. We need to involve everyone, from the forest department to the local communities to the fish of water people who are dependent on just the, the rivers, on just the waters, on just the species that they harvest are all important. We need to also get into the fold hobbyists, aquarists who are perhaps unknowingly releasing some of the invasive species and we also need traders. We need everybody in the community who is directly or indirectly involved with freshwater ecosystems to work together to help resolve this problem we have in the Western Ghats. One may say we should uh, have some regulations on catching the fish species from the wild. Second one, we should be able to breed, the, study the ethology or breeding biology of the fish species and again we should be able to breed the species in captivity. That's why the again the uh, pressure for the species to catch from wild can be reduced so that we can again promote the ornamental trade using the, again, species that is bred in captivity. Even if you're only keeping exotic fishes or not native fishes, you know, the first thing you can do is not release exotic fishes into the local water bodies. Um, you know, for example, the pleco catfishes, um, there's the jewel cichlids, um, there is this uh, tilapia which can kind of survive in most places, there is the African catfish, I mean, something which, which is very adaptable. Uh, over and above that, obviously, you know, protecting your local water bodies. A um, you know, lo lot of local water bodies disappear over different years because, uh, you know, they either filled with rubbish or they're used as a you know, dumping ground or there is some, uh, somebody's encroaching on that, right? So, typically, you're losing out on areas which are habitat for your local fishes. Uh, I think the third area is obviously, uh, if you have gained enough experience as a hobbyist, um, you can start breeding some species of native fishes, right? I was of the viewpoint that everything should be phased out in a time-based manner where species, traders, breeders are given a stipulated amount of time, a realistic amount of time where they can put in the efforts 
and this has to be combined with the central government institutes and the scientists who obviously have the know-how on how to breed these species because right now let's say a species is available only for four months but if it is captive bred it would be available the year round which would not only increase the income of all the breeders and the exporters but would also ensure that the fish is sustainable so in order to further conservation we've included these objectives within this project one is to identify stretches of rivers that are still viable identify communities within those stretches who would be willing to take part in conserving the habitat and species like Miss Carolina and our friends. And thirdly, to build capacity amongst these people so that in the long run, they know the advantages of conserving these stretches and the species and therefore act on it by themselves. So this gives us a wonderful opportunity to show to the world that if we save lesser known species, out of sight species like the freshwater fish in Kerala and in Karnataka, we can actually help save some of the more charismatic ones, like the well-known mammals, like otters and elephants. Everybody is dependent on waters and saving the very denizens of waters will help save the ecosystem and all the other beings dependent on it, including us humans.